Hey everyone, Flipper's Paragraph back with another review, this time of the 2009 Canadian drama history crime film Polytechnique. I'm super excited to be reviewing this with you guys. Now allow me to just introduce how I came across this movie in the first place. So I was scrolling through Criterion, as I do, and I came across... And I was looking for directors that I knew that were famous um, because I was looking to see if I could see any of their early movies. Because I was also preparing to see movies like The French Dispatch and Dune and Licorice Pizza, which are all coming out soon or have come out and I just haven't caught them yet. So I've been preparing for those. So I was looking up Wes Anderson. I was looking up Paul Thomas Anderson and I looked up Denis Villeneuve, the Canadian director. And I found out that he made a movie in 2009 called Polytechnique, which is finally on Criterion. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll check this out. And that's how I came across watching this movie. The plot of the film is extraordinarily simple. It's just the historical account of the uh, tragic Montreal massacre at the Polytechnique University, where an unstable misogynist murdered a bunch of female engineering students out of spite for feminism. And it's a horrible story. It's tragic. It's a very tragic real story. And it's treated very tastefully in this movie. But I just want to set that aside very quickly that I'm going to be reviewing the movie. And that doesn't... Any negative points that I say about the movie doesn't take away from the real life tragedy that happened. This is a film portraying an event that unfortunately is real so I just want to get that out of the way all of the respect and love in the world for the victims and their families but we're reviewing a movie here okay just wanted to make that clear anyway let's get right into it the movie starts off with this very strong opening um it reminds me of the opening of uh, children of men where it's just this very hard very jarring uh, scene of this explosion of these gunshots. Not an explosion. An explosion happens in the Children of Men intro. But in the intro of Polytechnique, there are these gunshots. It opens on these group of students just photocopying things of the library. And then some gunshots go off and one student starts bleeding from the ear. And then just hard cut Polytechnique title card, right? And it's done very effectively it's done very horrifically and it works very very well and it works to like lure you into the world of the film and really get you invested into what's going on the cinematography while it's effective and it's well done i'll use a word to describe it which i used before which is the word jarring it's very sudden and impactful the cinematography in this film and it's very robust and concrete and very heavy and all the shots feel like they have some weight behind them all of the uh angles feel like they have some weight behind them the lighting especially feels like it has a lot of weight behind it everything feels very heavy and very earthy and gritty and just like it, the movie cinematography feels the same way you do when you like grind your teeth if that makes sense it just has that sort of like molars pressing against molars kind of feel that just sends a shiver through your spine. And it's very well done in portraying the tragedy that happened. Another great thing about the film is the editing. It's clean and it's smooth and it keeps a pace going. It has this wonderful sense of structure and this wonderful sense, actually, the the editing has a sense of structure, not the actual writing itself. The writing I'll get into in a bit. But the editing has this wonderful sense of pace and this wonderful sense of chemistry between camera work and between story. It's very well done. It's very well executed. And it's one of the better parts of the whole film. One of the uh, best parts of the entire script, I would say, is that it keeps things very tense throughout. Like, there isn't a single moment in this movie where you aren't on the edge of your seat 
and really focused on what's happening, it's difficult not to if you're really paying attention to the film. And the film maintains this tension through its cinematography, through its editing, through its wonderful direction, through its wonderful sense of, uh, like, earthiness that I talked about, through its wonderful sense of grit. It has a lot of that, um, rocky feeling not like the film Rocky, but it has a, a grounded feeling to it. It feels very realistic. It feels very down to earth. And it allows the tension to build in a way that's very organic and in a way that's very deliberate and insightful into the minds of the characters and the mind of the killer. So I mentioned the directing, and the directing in this film is very well done. It's not. Denis Villeneuve's best, obviously. It's not one of his top. It's not him at his best in any way, shape, or form. It's just above average. It's much better than you would expect from him at this early stage in his career. A lot of directors at this early in their career aren't doing as many good things in this as Denis Villeneuve is doing in this film. So kudos to him for that. The directing is very well done. Another part of the movie that's that ranges from above average to mediocre is the soundscape. The sound effects aren't very interesting. The uh, recordings of the dialogue are fine. Um, it doesn't provide this sense of ambiance or the sense of space as well as other films do. So I take off points for it for that. It just doesn't have that same sense of capturing the environment or the characters through the sound. Instead, the soundscape just works on a technical level. Like, it's fine. It's a like a 5 out of 10 soundscape-wise, and it doesn't do anything that particularly impresses me. It doesn't do anything that particularly horrifies me. It's just completely average and completely forgettable. And speaking of forgettable, another part of this film that's a little bit forgettable is the dialogue. The dialogue between the characters at the beginning of the film. There isn't much dialogue in this film. I would like to see the script because I imagine the script is a lot of stage directions and a lot of descriptors. Not a lot of actual dialogue going around, which is an interesting choice considering Denis Villeneuve's other films that he would make later on in his career. Films that I've seen like Enemy and Blade Runner and Prisoners and Incendies all of which have very riveting dialogue. He got much better at picking his scripts once he really got going in his career. But for now, the script has very average dialogue, very forgettable dialogue. The dialogue sometimes is actually pretty bad. And it is a disservice to the film because I really want to empathize with the characters. Obviously, the characters are not based off of real people. They're completely fiction and... Despite them being fiction, I still want to empathize with them. I still want to connect with them. And I still want to understand who they are as a person. Which is difficult to do when the dialogue is as bad as it gets in this film. Two other parts that are mediocre, or I would say at least average, are the acting and the production design. The acting is absolutely nothing special. It's serviceable. It does what it needs to do, but it doesn't do it in any sort of exceptional way. It doesn't do it in any sort of memorable way. The production design is the same. I assume that they shot it at an actual school, that they didn't build it, because if they built it, then bravo, the production design is amazing. But I'm assuming that they didn't. And the school that they shot at, they it didn't feel like it was very well dressed. It didn't feel like the characters were wearing anything particularly memorable or particularly uh, well done. It was just average. The makeup was average. The hair was average. The costumes were average. The production design, average. The acting, average. This is probably going to be the review that I have that most straddles the line between good and bad, because this is the most average film I've seen in a long time. One good thing about it, though, another good thing about it, though, is that it's not overly dramatic and it's not overly exploitative, which you would imagine getting from certain movies like this, 
like that one piece of shit with Robert Pattinson that whose name I'm forgetting remember something I'll put the poster up right here but it's a very exploitative film if you know the ending you know exactly what I'm talking about but it you you'd imagine that it gets a little exploitative it being about a real life tragedy trying to get you to cry trying to get those emotions to bubble up inside of you but the emotions that it does get it does so in a very organic way it does so in a very believable way it does so in a very respectful way it never uses the victims as props to get tears from the audience it never does anything like that it's very respectful it's very courteous and I commend the film for that entirely. Absolutely, I do. But still, this is the type of story that would be better suited for like a documentary because the narrative structure of the film doesn't really add much. So like this movie lacks a lot of structure. There's a lot of tangents that happen. There's a lot of flashbacks. There's a lot of um, unnecessary scenes. And it's one of the worst structured films that I've seen in a while and it kind of balances out the good things that I mentioned like the cinematography and the editing is balanced out by like the pretty bland and pretty forgettable script so you you watch the film and there's all these tangents that happen and all of these deviations from the main plot that happened and you're sitting there wondering like where why, where is this going why is it going in this direction and it never gives you a clear answer as to why which is one of the bigger faults of the film it never not that it has to explain why it's doing why it's making the decisions that it's making but there should be a practical logistical storytelling reason why the decisions are being made and it never feels like it has those reasons that it, it never feels like there's a grander purpose for the choices being made. It feels more like the choices are made for momentary pleasure instead of long-term story lo uh, logic. Like, there's a lot of things that happen that don't really make a lot of logical sense. Like, when the shooter first starts his spree, he goes into an engineering classroom and orders them to divide between men and women. He orders the men to leave and the women to stay, and then he shoots all the women. In... The main character, who is a man, runs down the hall past, like, a hundred students and then tells a police officer that there's a shooter. Not once while he is running does he warn a single person that there is an active shooter in the building. Which is very bizarre. You'd expect him to be running down the halls, yelling at the top of his lungs that there's a shooter and everybody needs to get the fuck out of there. But he doesn't say a single word. And it's very strange and it's very distracting and it takes a lot and it takes you out of the movie. These like plot holes, I don't really love mentioning them in my reviews because plot holes are, in my opinion, kind of a lazy way to review a film. Because it's easy to go through a film like Cinema Sins and just be like, well, that doesn't make sense and this doesn't make sense. I think it only becomes a problem when it ruins your immersion and when it ruins the believability of the film. In which case, this completely took me out of the film and completely ruined my immersion. And I think the point of a movie is to be believable and to be immersive so that you can focus on the story. And this left me focused on why isn't he warning anyone? What is going on? And there were other instances like that where there were just not that many logical things that that happened like there's this narration that happens that's completely unnecessary there's this sappy ending that doesn't work at all there's this overly sentimental quality to the film sometimes that deters from the practical story logic because the film is meant to be very grounded so when it does become dramatic and when it does become a little more unbelievable, it's hard to imagine that this take, takes place in the same universe. I think one thing that would have made this movie better is if there were more character scenes. If there were just more scenes of the characters talking and interacting with each other and us really getting a sense of who they are and what they want and why they want the things that they want... Uh, what they believe in, what they love, what they hate. If we got a better sense of who they were as people, I feel like we could empathize better with the actual shooting that happened without it being 
distasteful or without it being disrespectful. You can have both. It's very easy to have both. You just have to make the characters empathetic. And unfortunately, the movie is only like an hour and 17 minutes or something. So it doesn't... It, it could have easily <clears throat> have added another 15, maybe even 20 minutes of just character scenes before the movie actually starts. And I wouldn't have been mad at that. In fact, I would have welcomed that very, very much. It would have made the movie significantly better. I already mentioned that the ending is kind of weak, and it really is. It doesn't stick the landing. It kind of shits the bed. Uh, there's a suicide that happens at the end. There's a narration that happens at the end. And it just, it, it kind of hits that over-sentimentality mark for me. And it doesn't work in its entire grand scope of what it's trying to accomplish with the film. So... Those are essentially my thoughts about the film. It's a pretty average film. It gets mediocre at some points. It was missing some fine-tuning in the script and a little bit more patience in the character side of the plot. It was missing a little bit of some better acting, a little bit better uh, production design. I wouldn't have been mad at some better soundscape elements, but overall... Not the best film I've ever seen. One of the more average films I've seen, actually. And I think I'm going to give this film a 51%. I would recommend this if you are a fan of historical films, if you are a fan of Denis Villeneuve, if you... Uh, I was going to say if you're a fan of black and white films, which is actually another part of the review that I completely forgot to mention. The entire film is in black and white for no real reason. And that's just one of those choices that happen that you sort of scratch your head wondering why did they make these choices? I wish there were some grander theme that we could latch on to that would allow us to understand why they chose to make it in black and white. Why they chose to have less character scenes. Why they chose this and that and this and that. You know? So overall, I would recommend this to Denis Villeneuve fans, like I said. I would recommend this to historical film fans. But unfortunately, not many other people besides that. If you like indie dramas, maybe I would recommend this to you. This film feels very, very indie. But overall, those are my entire thoughts. So this ranks right at the bottom, right above playtime, I believe. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Don't be afraid to like, share, subscribe, comment. Tell me what I should review next. Tell me. I need stuff to review. So don't be afraid to tell me what to review. And don't forget to look at the Patreon if you'd like. And that's going to be it for me, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.